I thought I'd make this video to share with you a bit about the kit that I'm using when I'm out and about filming and photography and climbing and adventures in general. I've been getting some questions about the kit that I use and I thought I'd make a video about it. So let's start with the camera itself. The camera I'm using is the Sony a7C Mark II. I've recently upgraded from the a7C Mark I. The reason is being that the stabilization is better. There's a higher megapixels, which is great for photos, especially if you want to crop in a bit later. And also if you're into color grading and stuff like that, then the video footage itself has 10 bit log style footage, which again is higher quality than the a7C Mark I. For me, it's a really, really good compact full frame camera that I take with me probably 80% of the times. There's 20% of the time which I take something else and that's a surprise that you have to stick to the end to watch. The lens I currently have on the camera that is filming it right now is the Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8. Problem that I find with that lens is that first of all, it's really heavy and bulky. So a 24 to 70, it's a great range, but it's kind of like a master of none, jack of all trades kind of uh, lens for me because I find that it's, not wide enough for what I need a lot of the times. And at 70, I'm just, I don't really use that tight length anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna be swapping that one out. The lenses I've tried are for the tighter end. I got this Sony 85mm f1.8, which is great, but this will not making it into my kit. The reason being, this is mainly used for street photography. I never take it out when I go outdoors. It's really good for portraits as well and with the 1.8, but it almost never makes it into my kit. The next lens that I have here, which I'm really, really excited about, is the 16-35 G f4 power zoom. Uh, quite a mouthful. Yeah, so this one packs a punch. I absolutely love it and i've done quite a bit of research before getting it i've actually rented it as well to try it out the main difference is the f4 compared to the 2.8 on the sigma but I, I had a day that i was like right i'm just gonna shoot everything on f4 today to see if i actually need the 2.8 if it's that such big of a difference and to my surprise no i mean the cameras these days are really good and if you really need to you can just crank up the iso and it's fine so yeah this is definitely going to be my main driver I can't stress enough how much I needed to go wider constantly and the 24 was just not wide enough. Whether you're in a car and you take a shot or if you're vlogging, which I don't, maybe I should do a bit more. <laughs> yeah, even when you're climbing, right? So a lot of the time you'll be like strapped to the mountain and you cannot really get further away because you're in the middle of a mountain, right? So having a wider field of view is really, 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 really welcome. Really looking forward to this this year. That's the main lens. With the lenses, uh, I have a variable ND. This one is from KNF. It does all the way from one stop to nine. So that is crazy. It goes all the way from one to, to nine stops. So it's not like some of the other NDs that I know that do two to five and then six to nine. This, this one does all the way to, to nine in one. So that's why I love it. The main reason I use NDs is because I want to open up my aperture as much as possible. So I always shoot wide open. And the reason for that is, is I want the camera to actually blare out all the debris that might get stuck to the lens or to the filter itself. So that's why I always shoot wide open. When you're out in the snow or in mountainous environments, you will get dust, you will get debris, you will get stuck to your camera and it's a pain to clean afterwards in post for videos. For photos it's fine, but yeah. So I highly recommend a good ND. Actually, I, I quite like KNF as a brand. I think they're great. This is not sponsored or anything, but I find that their um, equipment and gear is quite affordable and really, really good. Also the tripod they use, by the way, is from them. It's a, a carbon fiber. Uh, tripod, very light, very strong, has been with me everywhere. Yeah, tripod actually, I will take. Not if I'm in on a multi-pitch day in the mountain. If I'm on a multi-pitch day, I'm going very, very light. So definitely not getting a tripod, everything is gonna be handheld. Uh, but if it's a crag and stuff like that, then yeah, I'll bring a tripod with me. All right, next up we have uh, a drone. So um, the way I use drones is obviously for aerial photography. This is the DJI Mavic Mini 3 Pro. It really, really helps to kind of like get a nice scenery for, for everything and get people immersed into what it is that you're doing, like kind of like frame the story and the revealing shots from it. It's just, yeah, this bad boy has been through a lot. 
I flew it through two power lines by mistake. I didn't even realize that. It's in, it's in my previous video, you can see that. I did not feel the need to upgrade to the Mini 4 Pro that came out recently because I personally don't feel like I need the extra sensors or the higher quality. I think this is uh, high quality enough for me and um, I generally don't like to upgrade my gear unless I have to. So even the cameras waited three years with that. Cool, next item, and then we have uh, the big reveal. Uh, so the next item is the Insta360 ONE R. So this is a 360 camera. At the time that this was released, this one was... The, it's the version that you can basically change the mode. So you can, I can take the 360 lens out and put like an action camera style, like a GoPro style camera instead. So this is kind of like modular. But I've never actually used the three, the sorry, the action camera mod. Maybe once. I don't really like it. I think I love 360. I use the 360 quite a lot. The cool thing about it is because the two lenses are on each side. When you use it with the stick that comes with it, and also extends and, and whatnot, then the stick kind of like disappears in the in the video. So if if it's on your your helmet, not with the stick, but if it's on your helmet or in a backpack coming out of the stick it looks like there's a drone hovering above you. So I took a lot of my climbing shots I take like that. I absolutely love it. People keep asking, how would you do that? Do you have a drone that follows you? And yeah, this one is with me 100% of the time. So even if I'm going out and it's a big day out in the mountain and I'm going very, very light, I'm definitely taking this with me. It's just great. You don't need to point at it at anything. It just captures everything. This will be one of the items I would say for if you're filming yourself doing action stuff, this is a must. Next item, which is, I think, think, something that shocked me, if I'm honest. I, I was not prepared to, to how good it is, uh, is the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So this one, right, let me tell you a story first. So before this, I had the iPhone XS, I believe. So I didn't really use my phone a lot for videography and photography. I still don't think that the photography on this is, is any, anywhere near like a, a full blown camera. But the video quality on this is, wow, it just blows my mind. It's insane. It's, it, it does 4K up to 60 frames per second in ProRes log. And you can go, you go from like, in terms of the focal length and the lenses, you go from 12 millimeters all the way up to 120 with, with, with a tap while you're actually shooting. So you can like go from like extremely wide, wider than this, than the 16, and then go really, really tight in like in a flick of a button, and it's just, and it's really, really good, and it's stabilized as well, and the sound quality is not is not that bad either. I mean, I've, so in my recent film and on a mountain in Norway, the the big the second day, which is the big day, go and watch that film by the way. I'm really, really proud of it. <laughs> but the second day, because we were traveling really, really light, and we didn't know how long we're going to, we're going to spend, I didn't take any lenses, I didn't take the big camera, not the microphone, and not a drone. I took this, and I took this, and that's it. And people don't believe me when I tell them that I shot that whole day on, on just a phone and a 360 camera. So I, if, you're only, if you're only buying one camera for filming outdoors, get a phone, uh, the, specifically the, the, the latest iPhone. The, the amount of value you get out of it, it's, Look, but at the end of the day, the best camera you have is the one that is with you and that you're actually going to use. Yeah, so I would say definitely this. I do pair it with uh, a little hard drive. So this is the uh, Crucial X9 Pro, the two terabyte version. It's great. I, I know there is a Samsung kind of like similar one, but this one is lighter, cheaper and in my opinion better uh, the quality is great it has a uh, rubber on the bottom so it doesn't really slip um even if it's on your computer or something and yeah love it really really light and small cool so i'll leave links to everything in the description below hit me up if you want to know any more information about stuff and that's about it for today now yeah get out of here bye bye